after five o'clock, we, we have a quorum of four, plus Mr. Kyle with his summer haircut. So uh, I would call the meeting to order and hand the porch over to Kyle. You need to do a roll call with your presence. Uh, we can. Present, I see Deb Levinson, Mark Dunn, Michael Sarsinski, and Andrew Gnatt. And I'm sorry, and we have Kayla, and we have Kyle. Is there, and I don't think we have anyone else on that. No, that's it. And happy meeting. Right. Um, Randy had a conflict. Yes. Uh, family engagement and um, Justin is traveling and um, as, as is Randy. Yeah. Randy's on the West Coast, I think. Okay. Um, well, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I think the first thing on our agenda today is to review um, the status on our draft resident survey. So uh, last week, or sorry, excuse me, last month now, uh, our last meeting on January 24th, uh, Deb and Justin both to support the draft introductory little letter, um, which Deb provided and circulated. I have printed copies for everyone in front of you. Um, so we have that to review. Uh, I integrated feedback on draft questions. Uh, Kayla, are you doing this okay? Yeah, it sounds like there's some feedback. It's true? Yeah. Okay. Not bad. Okay. All right, we got it. Um, You're muted now? <clears throat> Excellent. All right. So uh, I'm sorry I did not print the latest version of the draft. Um, Survey Monkey was giving me some problems, but I'm able to access it remotely uh, through my uh, computer, so I can pull that up. Uh, and then uh, uh, the third thing to look at for our draft survey uh, agenda item is an update on announcing the survey via August water bills. Um, so I have an update for the steering committee on that. And, uh, and I was unclear. If it sounded like we could put a uh, folded eight and a half by 11 in there, but if you want to just do parcels, is that what yeah. you're thinking, or do you'll, you'll discuss that? Uh, I've got I've got a draft pull up, okay. happy to discuss it. Okay. Uh, I can, we can go about this in any order that- uh, No, let's, let's follow the order you prescribed. Right. Uh, so <clears throat> maybe taking a quick moment, I know it, uh, Deb circulated the letter um, today, so I don't know if everyone's had a minute to review. Um, but you have a printed copy in front of you. Um, happy to read aloud if we need. I don't think I have it pulled up. Well, just uh, yeah, one comment. Yeah. If we did a 40 yard in town, it's not limited to Hadley residents. Anybody in the country could move there, including anybody in the world. So, mm -hmm. so the, it's, this is not necessarily going to benefit Hadley residents. Mm -hmm. Probably won't benefit Hadley residents actually. Now, where they, where did we hear that there was? That was um, if we had accepted, if the town had accepted, if the ZBA had accepted yeah. the, the the hotel conversion, they would have done a lottery, and we would have been able to request local a percentage. But right, I don't think we yeah, can do so, that in so, general planning. So making the statement that. It's good. This is not going to benefit Hadley residents. It's going to be better if anybody wants to well, it could. come to a welfare friendly state. It could. Well, it could. It doesn't mean it cannot right. benefit right. Hadley residents. Well, but you start off many Hadley residents. It's that's irrelevant. I don't think most people irrelevant. can't. Most people can't afford to live anyplace anymore. Right. You know. Right. I, so I, I, I'll, I'll try to pick off that, but mm -hmm. uh, hearing you. Mike, I think I, I understand the steering committee hasn't yet determined if 40R is the final path forward. And I think maybe I was under the, the 
I had the understanding from our earlier conversation that we weren't ready to quite broach that topic. That right now we're kind of just getting the idea of oh, oh, yeah. smart growth or compact development. Yeah. But this suggests that the 40 R is the path for too much. If you read between the lines, correct, Deborah? No. No? No, no, not at all. I think this is just saying these okay. are some problems we're having okay. in town. Okay. You sure. know, and we're looking for some okay. solutions. But remember, one of the reasons that Massachusetts is so popular is because the welfare benefits are so great. And the more affordable housing you put in, the more people are going to come here to, to, to make access to welfare benefits. Do we? That's, I don't, that's I don't, not an editorial comment. That's fact. I don't know the demographic breakdown of the state, but uh, maybe we could table that to the end of the meeting okay. so we don't run out okay. of time. Okay, that's fair. Um, so if we look through, uh, I think, um, Deb, feel free to, to jump in and clarify, but it seems like um, the opening letter kind of sets the stage well in terms of the kind of pattern of land use. Um, the one thing that I would speak to is uh, this was clarified through some emails back and forth with um, Mr. Bill Dwyer from the Planning Board. He clarified that um, Hadley is actually at the top, if not the uh, leading municipality in the Commonwealth in terms of total acreage in the agricultural preservation restriction. Yeah. yeah. So it, it may be worth mentioning here. I know I, I haven't integrated it into the land use survey summary. Yeah. Uh, I intend to. I just haven't sat down with it. But I think it's worth mentioning that, you know, the community through the planning board and through some of the zoning that's been established over the years has protected a, a vast majority of, of the town um, from residential or commercial development. Um, so it, there may be an opportunity to, to elaborate on that just a little bit, but uh, I think this sets the stage of Kind of the pressures that the community is facing which aren't unique to hadley it's it's pretty common across the state um and i think it speaks to some of the concerns that residents uh, have expressed through the housing production plan survey uh concerns about particularly with the the uh, senior community the potential or lack thereof of downsizing you know uh, And then I think, you know, that that final paragraph down at the bottom, uh, these newer development patterns, sometimes called smart growth, uh, I think that's really what was missing in that initial introduction, um, which was really trying to help um, define that broad term, because uh, it pops up again, especially if the community were to consider 40R, that's going to come back um, so I, I don't have much more uh, commentary in regards to the letter, but um, just want to say thank you, Deb, and yeah, you're, you're, Justin. Justin. you're a good writer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just going to be run through by the uh, planning board before it goes out. I would think that yeah. this committee would have the authority to, to move forward without prior approval. I think I'd like it to run before the planning board since they created this committee. And we usually meet. The night before that. we're meeting so, tomorrow right so i'm saying we meet the night before them oh, so okay. it, so it shouldn't be a problem no. to bring this if it's hopefully on the agenda or somehow covered by yeah i think there's an update tomorrow there is an update scheduled you, you, on the you had sent out that oh, i'm sorry yeah, yeah you had sent out that announcement that it was a whole section on the news. yeah yeah okay. yeah um do you have any verbiage you wanted to put in about apr uh, I I don't have anything drafted up uh, for this. Um, I'm happy to share some language. I think, just this, I, think it's a, I think it's great to include it, and I think maybe just a sentence about yeah. it is enough. Yeah. Um, where, where do you think it should go, Mark? Do you have a thought on that? You can say it should be noted that Hadley has the highest acreage in APR, APR agricultural 
preservation acreage in the in the uh, state, and it will probably go either after part in paragraph two at the at the end or paragraph three at the end. It looks like it would fit well in paragraph two, yeah. Like, yeah. like right in the middle of it, where. Yeah. Which I was just going to say, I haven't had a chance to read this until now, because uh, I think you just set this up today, and I was at work. Um, yeah, sorry, exactly. Yeah. Right yeah. after that. Yeah, that's okay. So like right between uh, development, development constraint. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds good. Okay. Where? Um, after the second paragraph, uh, after this, after the second sentence, which ends in for residential development period, period, and then the next, and then it would go in, and then you'd be followed by constrained by current zoning. Okay, it should be noted that having as the greatest number of acreage and the greatest number of acres in our cultural preservation in the state. I am trying to, which limits any residential development. And broadly, lands historically used for agriculture have steadily been taken. That's directly from what Kyle wrote in the land survey. survey. And sold for residential development. And you, you, could almost, you could almost start it with, but it should be noted. Yes, that, yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like in contrast, good point. You know, we have been striving to yeah. 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 Bear with me. I'm just trying to pull it open here so I can edit in real time. We can capture this real quick. I mean, it should be noted too that more and more the agricultural land, I don't know what the percentage is, is used to grow tobacco <laughs> because that's the best cash crop around. Fifteen dollars a pound they're getting. Um, and it, tobacco is not smoking tobacco, right? It's wrapping. It's the wrapping. It's, it's, it's the wrapping. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it, there's that's it's on a risk. I mean, like I remember uh, Andrew's uncle uh, Jimmy got wiped out by what was it the blue mold that came up about? Oh, yeah. yeah. I grew some one year. Just shared up and it all got wiped out. Yeah. Hail yeah, yeah, yeah. Farmers are looking at these clouds right now. If this turned into hail, I mean, well, yeah, I digress. You know what happens, it just shreds it. I have a question if the land, if the land is on APR, can it still use that trading rights um, thing? The uh, TDR? The TDR? The well, I think that. And Mike can correct me, but I think the way the work goes is that the they trade it into the A. Right. APR. So someone's developing on Route Nine or wherever, and they can't meet the requirements, whether it's parking or something exactly. else. They can exercise the transfer of development rights and pay a certain amount per acre to bring them you know, to meet our, and then that money goes into a fund, which then can you know, purchase the APR right. from the farmers. So the the developer doesn't go to the farmer. The town, I don't know who the town handles that. Oh, I thought the oh, farmer the came to the town and no. said, I'm no, thinking of selling. Developer. I'd rather sell where you want me to develop no, than it's a yeah. developer. Yeah, I don't know how the, the APR. The, the, if the farmer wants it is an APR and he wants to sell to a developer, then retroactively the the farmer has to pay back all the tax benefits that he got over the years. Yeah. But when but if it's not any but when someone but for a farm to go into APR, yeah. I don't know if the farmer usually comes to the town or the town courts I don't well, know. The farmer comes to the town. Do you think so? Yeah. All right. Does it come from the town or the state? I don't know. I think it's uh, in terms of entering the program, I believe the landowner deals directly with the commonwealth no, okay. but there is a notice once it's confirmed then there is a notice that goes to the town because the town is granted uh, a first right of refusal wow, so if right. that property that's were to right. ever that's go right. onto the market that's right i believe the town has it's not a 
large window. I think it's 45 days, if I could be mistaken, mm -hmm. but it has a short window to determine if the town would like to purchase the property. Um, yeah, which they generally say no to. Generally, I, I believe towns don't have the um, available funds to act that quickly. Yeah. Uh, I've highlighted what I believe if I heard come from the city committee. Uh, if we want to quick look, um, it should be stated that Hadley is the leader in the preservation of agricultural lands with their participation in Massachusetts Agricultural Preservation Restrictions Program with 3,000 acres preserved. I'll clarify with the exact number. And does it start with the word but? I can't say that part. Oh, no, it. It should be. Because I think more suggestions. Yeah, I, I, I would but. say but it should be because it's kind of a shift in direction from the previous sentence. But it should be noted that Hadley should, have a, should it be a semicolon? Yeah, sure. semicolon and then small b. But stated or noted? Happy to change it. Yeah, I'm fine with noted either way. Uh, that Hadley is the leader or do you want to say the leading town in Massachusetts or but anyway yeah happy to shorten it but I'm saying this state leader yeah. state leader So, but it should be noted that Hadley is the state leader in the preservation of agricultural lands through the participation of Massachusetts Agricultural Preservation Restrictions Program with 3,000 odd acres preserved. And again, I'll clarify that exact number uh, when I can reference my emails. It's buried there somewhere. Uh, or if we really want to make it sound paramount, we could say. Hadley is the number one town in the state. Yeah. <laughs> that there's the you know, leader, there's some leeway. Anyway, but anyway, yeah. And then maybe, because I think that then the next sentence gets a little confusing, constrained by current zoning. These developments, maybe you said these, the new developments have almost entirely focused. It's so far separated then from. Mm, yeah. What these developments are. Mm, right. It's all for residential development. Yeah, new new developments would, would be. That's all this is. Yeah. And is that, uh, can you just direct me to the paragraph that we're referring it's to? Again, that second sentence, it's, it's right after what you added. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you want to make okay. note that it's because of the, because of this, the APR dedication, blah, 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 there was. Limited acreage available for further single family residential development, which can be quite expensive on a per unit basis. Don't they talk about units here? Yeah, units. I think like we don't want to make it too much longer, but if we just say these new developments, then it refers back or to what you're these new discussing. residential developments, just to remind okay. them what we're trying to talk about. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it is housing. But so these new residential developments. Have almost entirely focused on more expensive single family dwellings. Well, they have to be single family by current zoning. Yeah. Okay. So, revisions highlighted in yellow there. question for the um, committee in terms of signing it. Um, I didn't know if we wanted, if there was any one person who should, like, if one person should sign it so that people know who they can, like, if, it, if Mark should, say, you know, if Mark should or sign if, it as the chair of the committee. Or if we just put all of our names on it. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. All of our names, we're just saying. Unless the Mark vice chair wants to be responsible for it. <laughs> we just signed it. Yeah, why don't you sign a vice chair, Jimmy? Get, <laughs> like I said, 
resume stuff. <laughs> Andrew, <laughs> Andrew, I mean, Andrew. I, I didn't you. know if we wanted people to be able to contact anyone, actually. About people it. know how to get a hold of me all the time. I just, <laughs> they'd be surprised who stops me. But I don't care. I'm just not. But I think if anyone signs it should be our chair if it's only yeah. one person. Mm -hmm. But, um, Okay, sure. Could even just do it as the Hadley Smart Growth Steering Committee. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's. We, we could, all, although we it's. We could all initial it. <laughs> I mean, does anyone who wants to find out who, who, who we are can just look it up? Yeah. I don't know. I always like seeing a name on there just to make it personal, honestly. But um, so, it's, it's not my name. Yeah. I, even, I don't have a problem. Or, or Mark. Mark Dunn chair for the right for the for the steering, the steering committee. I mean, I certainly didn't do this myself. I didn't do anything. So, is anybody out there watching this? They will be. Actually, yeah, it could be on the YouTube channel. It will be. Yeah. Once they see Kyle um, in the meeting, we we get lots of hits. <laughs> Uh, point of just clarification: Was there ever anything added to the planning board web page that mentions this committee? I don't think so, because we haven't even gotten around to putting our names and terms on it, which we used to have, and has somehow gone away in the different incantations and service providers or whatever. So I, I don't think I, I don't even know who's responsible for maintaining that page. Uh, I don't know. It may. Be Jennifer, it may go to Kayla. I, I don't know. Kayla, would yeah, you know? Jennifer has most of the editing privileges on the website. But if you want to nest the Smart Growth Committee information in the Planning Board page, I can add information to that page. I have access to the Planning Board and Conservation pages, but everything else is Jennifer. So if you want to create a new page, then you'd have to. I could ask her if you if you want to create a new page, if she could do that. But it's up to you. And maybe we bring we mentioned that tomorrow night since we are we serve at the pleasure of the planning board. With uh, this these changes that we made, um, not to split hairs, but would it read better if we did like right after why is this happening now and then while it should be noted that like uh, oh. and then then we can then we could just drop that new residential to, and then it would kind of read a little bit smoother. I think that's a good idea. Okay. So I think you're right about that. We would take the initial edition. Yeah, and just put while it should be noted right after why is this happening now. Okay. So we're moving it up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Lead off with that. Yeah. Okay. Maybe you, Andrew, you said cut the new residential? I think we could, because then it just reads. It can go outside. back to how it read yeah. initially. Yeah. Instead of there was an extra space there, so it was almost like you anticipated it. So <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Something was going to fit there. That's Perfect. right. So now that paragraph reads, why is this happening, happening now? While it should be noted that Hadley is the state leader in the preservation of agricultural lands for the participation of Massachusetts Agricultural Preservation Restriction Program with 3,000 odd acres preserved, economic pressures have led to changing uses of land within Hadley. So then I guess that would need to be comma, economic pressures. Broadly lands historically used for agriculture. Yeah. I think that's good. I think that does read a little bit nicer. Thank you. Uh, any other um, Revisions or edits that we see yeah. Yeah. Just the sign about the sig well, the sign about the signature. Right. CBS really wants me to come pick up my so I I think if we're able to con connect with Kayla, maybe get a, a just an, a small addition to the planning board page, mm -hmm. we can list everyone's um the committee yeah. in, in total and then at least provide contact information for that would be a, that would be a good place to start. And then if we in the future if we want to put documents there that they can read, yeah. Or that might even end up being where your survey monkey link goes to the to see back 
documents. But first, we have to get that through the the Lords of Planning. Right. <laughs> Can we advertise this on the uh, Spectrum Charter page? Yeah. Somehow. Um, cable TV. Um, yeah. I can't oh, that on your line. So we kind of have a TikTok channel. <laughs> <laughs> right through China. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is there a social media for you? Uh, I think we could follow up with um, maybe Alex. Yeah. I, I, There's yeah. a Facebook page for Hadley Media that I think Alex posts uh, notices and informational pamphlets and flyers for a town business. So you'd yeah. probably be open to having that on the Facebook page. That's good. Yeah. I think he has been interested in supporting us. Oh, you mentioned bu budgetary concerns. Oh, you want to get into that? Yeah. 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 I was going to this whole thing up. Um, it's a lot of money. Yeah, it it comes down to the time time that I need to spend on advancing some of these things. Um, with something like an announcement, um, you know, small little things. If the steering committee is able and willing to take up little tasks, it it helps. Um, I'm trying to reserve a section of the budget so that we get some uh, money still remaining to draft something on behalf of the community. You meant on $25,000. Uh, there is an opportunity if we want to um, explore. Um, we can maybe talk about that at the end of the meeting, but there, there is an additional funding source that's available that the planning board is ready to move forward with. Um, and I can we can talk a little bit more after. Okay. Um, yeah, it is something that is at the top of my mind right now. But, um, yeah, that might fall between items three and four on your. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I think as of right now, this this uh, document looks, I think, nearly complete. If uh, the committee is comfortable with the signature as Mark Town Chair on behalf of the Smart Growth Steering Committee. Yeah, or, or it could be, you know, signed by, it could say, the steering committee and then underneath marked on chair if everyone doesn't want their names. Mm -hmm. And then I can say, yeah, you can reach Mike at East <laughs> Commons. Yeah. Um, or the village of Florida. <laughs> so then we can bring this to um, the planning board tomorrow just for them to have a quick quick review and um, offer any insights if they need. Um, the way this will work, um, bear with me as I pull up the survey monkey on this screen. But um, it'll go in right here at the top. So it'll be essentially a big block of text um, unless I find a different way to do it. I, I don't like the link idea, uh, but it'll be a large block of text uh, that I will try to stylize a little bit just so it reads nicely. Uh, but um, the way that I've tried to redesign the survey uh, starts with the opening letter and then the first question, which is, are you a resident of Hadley? I think um, from our last meeting, we wanted to clarify that this is a resident survey and we're really strictly looking for input from residents. Um, so it's a yes or no question. If they answer honestly and hit no, uh, it goes to a, a disqualification page, uh, which just says, I'm sorry, but you're, you're no longer able to take the survey. Yeah. I'm going to try to wordsmith that. I haven't figured out how to do it just yet in the can format. You, yeah. Uh, if you'd like, I can preview that. You mean with the disqualification? Yeah, I'm trying to. It could be nice. Like, Thank you for your interest. Right. This uh, this first survey is only for our residents. Or yeah. Something. So if we if we look at yeah. is it possible? No, it says that's yeah. the end of the preview. Uh, it just kind of goes kicks you out. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna if they click around. yes, can you have it pop up a box and you can say what street and you know, not ask them for their their number, but just so that if someone 
gets kicked out and then was like, well, I'm just going to say yes next time. And it says what's street, it just, oh, I'm well, really serious about this. Hmm. You know? um, yeah, I can. I can look, look into that. Uh, definitely add that question. Uh, I don't know. I won't do that one in real time. But I mean, I'm just a little concerned that people might think that makes it less anonymous if they. Okay. I don't know. I mean, okay. That's I fine. don't know how other people feel about it, but. Mm. Okay. Yeah, what's the worst that happens? That we don't, that we get people out of. People who, click, people who click yes that are. Has that been a problem with people for stopping? I, I, I have no idea. If we get more than... Well, clearly, if you got a movement in place to... Sabotage. Well, sabotage or not, or the, the contrary. If we get more than 3,000 responses, we'll know somebody's <laughs> stuffing the... I think if you get 100 responses, you're going to do good. Yeah. So statistically, yeah. that's going to be yeah. meaningless. Yeah. Yeah. I think you can probably like look at the data and kind of, if it's starting to get stuffed, you can kind of see where it is and sort of mix. And, yeah. yeah. Why did we have to go this route with community input when we know what's going to happen? It's going to be the same hundred people that answer the survey and just educate the people as to the, the, the bylaw, right? Why are we doing this? I, I You said that we were in favor of this community input and I'm not sure it's relevant because nobody participates. And so why? Yeah. Why? I, I think there is our, my experience in um, working with other communities, the educational piece is huge. So that's a big, um, a big task and a big component of engagement broadly. Uh, just educating the broader community about the topic, a big umbrella term of smart growth, before we even get to the specifics of uh, Chapter 40R uh, and all the complicated requirements that are needed to, you know, the hoops that you have to go through to apply and qualify. There is a requirement from um, EOHLC. If 40R is the route, they want to see evidence of community engagement uh, with at least one public hearing, um, which can be a, a public community meeting. Um, so, and I do think if, if this ends up coming to town floor and if it ends up passing, we are a body of people, you know, here to represent the public. We, you know, we're not like Northampton where there's a ward and we only work to represent our ward. We all represent all Hadley. And I would not want to put something up to a vote and have it, quote unquote, stuffed down anyone's throat who says, I didn't know about it. Mm -hmm. I didn't, my voice wasn't heard. You know, I, so I think it's a due diligence that we want. We, we, by historical expectations, we don't expect to hear, but that doesn't mean we four in the hat. But by the same token, there's other ways to educate besides sending out surveys that nobody's going to answer. I'm not sure why you're saying that, Mike. In the 2022 survey, they had, what, about 250 responses? About 3,000? I know. It's a, it's a, I think it's a fairly That's low, but not not unusually low response rate. Well, it's the same 250 people that come to town meeting. What's, Maybe, but what's a typical? But I think we can. <coughs> I think with our attitude, we can encourage as much participation as yeah. possible. And that sur those survey responses were thoughtful. They weren't, you know, they were useful and thoughtful. Eight percent. What's our standard voter turnout at? Uh, elections, it's like a thousand, forty percent, maybe a thousand, between a thousand. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's been over two thousand, is it? I believe there were three hundred and fifty-two respondents. It just to, to the housing production plan. It's always if we're trying to save money, we're spending a lot of money on this, right here, and you really don't have participation nor education. Well, not not in this particular element of our engagement, though. Right, but that's where the the small group the the idea between a multifaceted you know 
a survey of some focus groups before a larger community meeting is to start laying the groundwork, getting the the fundamentals kind of in place before we start getting into the more detailed and nuanced. I mean, we, we've pretty much gone through the 5,000 already that was allocated, right? Uh, uh, no, no, uh, we're, we're at past the halfway point. No. And that's where I started getting concerned, especially as we start thinking about, you know, what does it actually take to facilitate upwards of, I believe we identified six or seven focus groups, you know, that, um, that could be two to three hours a piece. If, if it's a lot, a lot asked of me and my colleagues, mm -hmm. the more, again, the more available and willing the steering committee, you know, the more the budget can be stretched because you're providing that in kind match of your time and effort. Well, I don't have time to, to, to I, I work with time. I mean, yeah. I and so to see. And so, right. It's a problem. So it, it's in Joe's you know, Ronick's too old to work. I mean, <laughs> Jimmy Maximoski works and Bill Dwyer works. I mean, we're citizen planning board. Our citizen planners, you know, absolutely. So, as is the steering committee, you're, you're effectively citizen planners at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, and I am very grateful for your efforts. Um, and if if we need to reassess, we, we can, but um, we have the starting um, of a, I think, a really good resident survey that's going to get a sense of what could that section of Route 9 from the bike path underpass to town line of Amherst look like. Um, and I think you've got a lot of great ideas of, of different uh, community members that you'd like to hear from and may have some really good insights to provide. So do you have an estimated budget going forward as to what this is going to cost in turn, including your time in drafting the bylaw and whatever? I have a bare minimum, um, essentially looking at what is existing in the, the original grant, um, looking at more of an hour allocation approach. Um, there's options within Pioneer Valley um, to award additional hours. Um, but in order to draft a complete bylaw uh, and get through an entire, if 40, like say if 40R is the desired route, to do all the required steps and to work through that application, I don't know, if, I don't think this budget will cover it or the additional three days of work that the town could request from the, the commission. That's where we can just springboard into it. Uh, the Executive Office of Environment, Energy and Environmental Affairs, excuse me, e -O -E -E -A, uh, offers annual funding through their community planning assistance grants, uh, three different pools of 150,000, so it doesn't add up to a lot, but uh, the town could request a maximum of 50,000 uh, to do essentially this. Um, the program focuses on smart growth zoning, um, um, zoning for sustainable housing production, zoning to address compliance with Section 3, which does not apply to Hadley, um, smart uh, smart growth zoning 40R uh, or mixed use zoning broadly. So even if the commission, the steering committee and the community doesn't want to do 40R, this project and the effort to draft that zoning um, bylaw revision would still qualify for this grant. Mm -hmm. The DLTA funding, so the, the budget as it exists um, qualifies as a match, which is required for this grant. So just leveraging that alone without any additional funds from the planning board, the town could request $30,000. If the planning board wants to leverage a little bit of their budget for consultation that they contract with PDPC, we could ask for up to the maximum, depending on how the planning board wants to play. Our budget is pretty lean. It is. It is. Understood. You know, for education, we have, I think, four or $500 yearly. Right. 
It's pretty darn um, But that's that will be discussed more in the planning board's contribution yeah. will be discussed more uh, tomorrow. But I think if they don't important. want to add anything, yeah. we can still move forward and request thirty thousand dollars, which would be well above what is initially allocated and mm -hmm. would get us closer to what some of our neighboring communities have um, secured for their similar projects, which they're also struggling with. They're, those budgets are running short quickly. What kind of additional involvement would you be looking for from, from SC? Uh, in terms of uh, I think it, it really boils down to would it be like doing with like being involved with the focus groups? I think the focus groups is where I'm most concerned in terms of how it impacts the budget. Okay. Because you know, dr there are g generic questions that are to be drafted for all, but then there are probably follow up and specific questions for each you know stakeholder group. Yeah. Um, this the time of sitting with those. Um, Really, yeah. So the time of sitting with that, the time to synthesize those notes and that input, and then reporting it back, you know, that just adds up. Yeah. Um, so if it if it fell in mostly or entirely on myself and my colleagues, I would I I think I added it. Yeah, it's in the strategy if we want to switch, switch gears. Um, uh, I put in bold under point two. Um, anticipate two to three hours per session. Um, if that's entirely on, it's for the bullets at the bottom of page. Oh, oh, okay. on the front mm -hmm. page. Uh, if the steering committee was able to participate and really lead that and maybe even facilitate entirely without my presence, um, it would be as low as one hour per session, you know, just to bring all that together to synthesize. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I can certainly put in. Yeah, you know, the community approved it. I could certainly fill in some time on this. Yeah, and I, 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 could, I could do a little bit of time also. Right. That's hugely helpful. Oh, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Sure. I think it also it does boil down to um, moving forward, depending on how the steering committee would like to format the larger community with the voice. If it's able to function and operate without additional. Pioneer Valley Planning Commission staff, the better, you know, if, if I need to bring in a colleague to help facilitate a conversation, that's another staff that we have to pay uh, that impacts the budget. Um, so it just depends on how we want to structure that. Um, if well, we want to go- something like that, I would, I would assume that most of the committee could be there and facilitate breakout groups. That yeah, probably not. There's all, not. I'm not as enthusiastic about this as most of you are. I'd rather be weeding my tomatoes right now. I got yeah, to watch me. Tell that, but I'm sure there would be several of us. Yeah. Who I I who didn't. Uh, looking ahead at the public forum community meeting, um, I would think that the least burdensome on the budget would be the panel style. That's very similar to what was proposed from the Housing and Economic Development Committee. So it would really just be one staff, myself or my oh, colleague. We, we, we don't have to meet in person to do that. You can do it on a Zoom meeting, right? Yeah. Right. It's just a matter of, you know, if, if it's just one person participating and the rest is volunteers from mm -hmm. the community, you know, it's, it's not tapping into the budget. It's a lot of volunteer time. Mm -hmm. If it's conversational and it's, you know, I need to be facilitating or I need a colleague to be you know, moderating it starts adding to the budget or the cost of it. Um, well, we may actually have two committees to draw from, right? Because the true if the housing and economic housing development, economic development they, yeah, they could are along the same lines. Right. I think be, between the two committees, we should probably have enough folks to be able to, okay. you know, do conversational breakouts. Right. Um. So uh, th this particular topic, this conversation regarding the, the engagement strategy and how it relates to the budget, and we'll, we'll get more into the weeds, I'm sure, tomorrow with the planning board and with our update. Um, I, I believe the planning board is 
is open to moving forward with the grant regardless. I think it is a good opportunity. Um, it's not a huge lift in terms of drafting. Um, it's, um, we don't talk to Bill Dwyer about it. There was an email thread in, um, in which I yeah. said I was in support of it, and I think Bill said he was as well. And he went ahead and uh, got it onto the select board's um, Wednesday meeting so agenda. He's so, gonna go, so he's going to go Wednesday. Um, so um, we have a week to draft that uh, submission. Um, it would be not a huge lift. It's just getting the planning board to agree to draft a quick letter of support and either commit you know, the existing budget or additional funds. And then the select board supports it as well. And then I make that all into a PDF and the town administrator sends it to the program director. It's an email submission. It's pretty straightforward. I think we should pursue it. It's uh, that would give funding to get into the weeds about design standards, you know, make sure that you have the time to yeah. talk through those if you're thinking about it. And what and that means. Design standards architectural? Um, when you start thinking about, um, uh, yeah, anything that requires, you know, descriptions or illustrations of yeah, uh, facade or roof line. Or Isn't that setbacks? putting the cart before the horse? Well, it's a requirement for 40R, and it's recommended for smart growth, especially if you're putting in a, you know, a mixed use or you're blending uh, commercial and residential. It's it's a typical component of a bylaw like that. They're they're included in the existing mixed use in the village center. It sounds like you want to redevelop all of Route Nine. No, I think we're saying if we come up with something that we want to do, either for the R or some other, that it it could be a uh, overlay district, right? For the R would have to be or something like that. And if we do that, it shouldn't just be two paragraphs. We should, you know, we should be able to say it has to meet these standards. You know, either it matches on the others or it has some new standards. But that takes a little thought. Yeah. I, I thought we just this just started out with two of the hotels, Howard Johnson and the Econo Lodge. I mean, now we're expanding it greatly. I don't think that's what the intent was here. How did that start? Well, that was those were the properties identified for redevelopment. Um, we want to do spot forty R with those two. Well, it was made clear in conversation with the. Um, 40R planners at the state level that they don't approve applications for single parcels or single property. Yeah, well, I'm almost ready to pull the plug on this. I think it's getting way out of out of control. Way out of control. This is way beyond the scope of what has ever been discussed at the planning board, I think. Um, well, we can bring that to the planning board. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think we might. I don't think there was ever said it was going to be just this. I think those were those were options that yeah, that were but, that were tossed out there. And another option was what the state had, which was like this huge zone. And we said, you know, we don't want that. So I, we were I, I we hoping we'd find yeah. something in between. I certainly don't have the expertise to design Route Nine and what the roof line should be. It's like that, right? I mean, I thought this was going to be a simple project and. Just 40 R in certain portions of Route 9 and go from there. Now we're taking it to the state basically telling what you have to do, and we don't want that. Well, I don't think this necessarily going down the route of 40 R is the state telling you what you have to do. There are prescriptions, there are uh, strong recommendations with the model bylaw that they've drafted, which includes design standards and the review of those. It is part of the application 40R that you have to build your bylaw off of the model. It could be striking certain clauses. It could be saying this doesn't work for Hadley, um, but it has to be shown that you're starting from the model bylaw if you're applying for 40R and that zoning incentive payment upwards of $600,000, which with an affordable housing trust, the community use um, trust, that's a lot of money that could go to starting affordable housing projects. Um, an example from a 40R development recently in Northampton, 
Um, Village Commons, the, the passive apartment complex, I believe 30 something units up on Village Hill. I think the community only leveraged it was something like two to four percent of the total project cost. It was a quarter of a million dollars, two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So not a lot in terms of a big development, but okay, yeah, the land. Yeah, the land. True, but with an affordable housing trust and you know an influx of two hundred thousand dollars, you can start procuring or securing some properties. You know, it's a tough one. Yeah, you know? it is tough. And I think that's where the town doesn't want to get into real estate development. We don't want to procure park properties. At least I don't think the town does. I mean, we've got enough properties that are rotting away. Right. Well, that's where the incentive payment could go towards, you know, drafting those um, requests for proposals, you know, inviting people to purchase some design, set those parameters, develop yeah. those performance and such. One, one developer tried to do that with, um, Russell School and the requirements or, or the, what had to be done was were onerous. You, you know, basically you better have to build a building from scratch but make it look like it is now. Okay. Yeah. And that's still a property that's yeah. That's okay. Something. Well, it's not your fault, Kyle. You're doing a great right. job of leading us, but I'm just trying to be a devil's advocate here. Sometimes you have to face reality. Is this really the direction we want to go for the 40R? Yeah. We don't want this to turn into just a boondoggle and put all these paperwork, all this paperwork together. And at the end, you have nothing. I hear you. I think that's where, you know, before the 40R question can truly be decided, I think the plan from the initial application from the planning board, they want to know is the community ready for smart growth on 40 on route at nine. Excuse me. I would say that smart growth probably isn't really the proper definition. Well, the compact development. You know, yeah. you know, there's there's yeah. a half dozen phrases yeah. that you can I'll shut up. They're not for me. <laughs> um, but in terms of the survey, if we want to go back, we've jumped into the, the added topic of the budget. Uh, there is a strategy moving forward. We will preserve some portion of the budget for bylaw drafting, regardless of what we get to. So we'll be able to draft something, and we do have some emergency funds, uh, you know, an option there. But uh, the revisions that we made uh, based on feedback. Um, so for this, I'm sorry, you'll have to look to. Kyle, would you mind reading yeah, the I, question? Because I can't, I can't read. Yeah, I can't. I'm trying to. I can't change that. Oh, well, video, I can read too. Video. Uh, you got good eyes. Rezoning, <laughs> a good optometrist. Rezoning to encourage smart growth invites the potential for greater development. What Colon. Is? What effects are you interested in learning more about? Question mark. Select all that apply. School enrollment, infrastructure, water and sewer, traffic and road conditions, taxes, other, housing, parking, public services, dash, police, slash, fire, etc. Slash what? Etc. Yeah. So that first uh, question number two, that was just um, a little bit of a rephrasing in the, the question itself. No changes to the options. I believe I moved it up to start based on uh, reviewing the draft letter, uh, trying to get into, uh, you know, continuing that idea of smart growth. Um, yeah, I think we had talked about just saying, select your top three. Okay. Because we, you know. Is that? If you just say, what are you interested in? And everybody says everything. Okay. You haven't really gotten much information. So change, select all that apply to please pick your top three. Yeah, I would say so. And you say, what impacts are you most interested in learning more about? Uh, 
No change, but no, uh, moving on to question three, what green amenities would make Route 9 more pedestrian friendly and attractive? I think the change was we removed the term walkable and replaced it with pedestrian friendly. Um, no change on uh, suggested responses or pictures. So that's, that's not to include bicycles, it's just pedestrian? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, there is a greenway and trail option, but okay. um, we there's a, another question for kind of transit or traffic further down. Uh, number four is the question: Would you be open to the redevelopment of Hampshire Mall to a mix of businesses and housing? I took out some jargon that was identified. Mm -hmm. That's a yes, no, maybe option. Um, would, you, would you be open to? Number five, would it be not, um, would it be possible to have five options like very favorable, somewhat favorable, undecided, slightly disfavorable, and definitely against? You know, that would just give us a little more. I think that's useful. So. Something like that. I wonder if Chase Bank would have put their building there, which I wish they had. Yeah, it's gonna, yeah, I know, it's if crazy. they knew that um, Hampshire Mall was in discussion about becoming residential, I don't know. would you be? Oh, mm -hmm. would you be interested? Or, I don't like that for be open to. I don't know something like. Feel free to talk it out as I build these five options. Would you? Is that for even bothering with? I mean, or is there? Mm -hmm. A more specific thing than be open to. That just seems very touchy feeling for a survey, <laughs> especially if we have right. gradations. I, think. I don't know. Interested, uh, favorable, or would you? How is it phrased, Carly? Again, would you be open to? It could be rephrased to the development of the world. How favorable are you to? Uh, I think that, that could work. How favorable are you to worry? Sounds a little. On a scale of a one to ten? Well, on, on the scale that Mark says. I think we're doing one to five. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, I'm like bum, bum, bum. Yeah, you know, like bum, 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 bum. I'll just rock, let a flash of Secret Service beef up, beef up Trump's security with squad of blind midgets. <laughs> Maybe you need a different news feed. What? Yeah, what station is that? Is that the Onion? <laughs> what are the options you're writing down just so we can make uh, match up with the question? Uh, I can change this to match the I would. I'd rather change it to match the question. But currently, okay. the question reads: How favorable are you to the redevelopment of Hampshire Mall to a mix of businesses and housing? We could say very favorable, mildly neutral, mildly unfavorable. Yeah. Okay. Strong. Yeah, that gives us some information. And if someone wants to word it differently, I'm, I'm certainly open to that. Kyle, we say housing. Are we talking rentals or are we talking ownership? Rentals, right? Um, do we know at this point? We're kind of, that's we don't know yet. Here. Don't know. Okay. I think the pros would say what the mm -hmm. debt demographics more like to rentals. You know, the problem with the economics of this whole thing is what you pay for a house in Hampshire County, or the Hadley also, is that you can't rent it for enough to amortize the loan. So we I think that phrasing is good. Rents catch up or the cost goes down. Does that, does that read accurately? It's how favorable are you? And you can choose a strongly favor, favor, favor. How much do you favor? Yeah. <laughs> I don't pray that very I don't right. write a question like this very often. So no, I know. You Andrew, you're the wordsmith here. What you... Could you say strongly favor, mildly favor? I don't know if you need to have tons. How would you like to live next door to a target? Some people might enjoy that. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they can go they can buy groceries there, that's for sure. All these are is across the street. You don't shop at all these, you're making a mistake, but uh, all right, so number four seems a little bit better, uh, at least a, a better range of 
think it could, but could harvest some more usable information. Yeah. Uh, moving on to question five, uh, change some phrasing. Uh, it reads now, what scale of intensity feels appropriate along Route 9? Uh, we well, that's moved. wide open because it's like which stretch of Route 9? You know, what feels appropriate by Jiffy Lou might not feel the same next to, you know, Right. Captain Savings Banks. <laughs> so we had talked about we this a little bit last there. last meeting. I reviewed the housing production plan, and um, those surveys identified Route Nine corridor (parentheses bike path underpass to Amherst Town Line). Um, yeah, which I that's probably think is is what we were discussing that's essentially is. Yeah. More of the area that could be redeveloped for mixed use that doesn't have some existing residential. So that would be adjacent. It's, what we could say Route 9 east of Pulse or whatever you want to call it. Probably Garden Star. Yeah. Can't call it that anymore. So we would have two different questions. And no, repeat. no, I think we would just clarify appropriate along Route 9, comma. East of yeah, I, I put parentheses, you know, okay. Route Nine, so that they're not like, oh, I, I don't want that, you know. But I thought we had talked about getting a sense of what kind, kind, if any, people would want to consider west of that area. Can we talk about that? Like, but it might be different. But yeah, but I don't know. If that might be something that we pull out in the focus groups because I think here we're trying to limit how many questions we ask, right? Because that's that's a whole nother ball of wax, I think. Right. Because we're talking about we're talking about density. I think I'm here, I think I'm I, I'm assuming that if we're gonna go for increased density, it's probably mostly going to be east of the bike path crossing. Yeah. I don't think the village center and then when you go west of the village center, there's yeah, that might be a separate we project or something like that. It was shut down in three three years ago or so. The uh, over fifty five housing off of Middle Street, and it would require a zoning change. And it was a NIMBY type thing in my backyard. So failed, unfortunately. Because mm -hmm. were you around when that happened? No, no. no. Yeah, that was um, ten million a few years ago. I think also we were discussing keeping it away from the uh, village center because there are existing zoning overlays. So then there you would create kind of this confusing zoning situation where you'd have a base of residential, which is strictly single family with an overlay with an overlay. Uh, it gets complicated and Developers don't necessarily like, my understanding, developers don't like complicated zoning. Have you seen more complicated zoning than Hadley's? Um, more? I, it's it's not too complicated. It's not that bad? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think, yes, I have. I, I've looked at Springfield zoning map. Probably not. Place, 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 zone, the parcel. Town or, type situation. Yeah. No, in terms of towns, I really don't think Hadley's that complicated. Also. Okay. Um, um, it's not the simplest, you know, we, you have communities in the hill towns, that it's just one dumb, it's yeah. not it's straightforward. But that also means they don't have, they don't have any commercial tax base, they don't have any businesses, they don't have any gas stations, you know. And they don't have any control over what type of use goes where. Right, exactly. Yeah, no problem. If that's what we're trying, other than we're protecting trying to keep open commercial space. out of residential areas and right. industrial out of so for wording, yes, I think, yeah, I, I seem to remember a conversation about this, but I think the words intensity and density are both kind of off-putting. And I, okay. I thought, I had some notes here that we talked about what kinds of housing would you feel appropriate in a district, okay. blah, 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 et cetera. Just it's more. But, but density is a word that's used often in development. I think uh, it is. I had opted to. Or, shift over to the use of the term intensity because the reference images we have have a quick little kind of definition 
Um, well, I think it comes in down here, but I don't know, kinds of housing, oh, it introduces the topic without, um, I don't know, in a common and neutral way, I think. Okay. And why does it have to be neutral when you're stating a fact? Well, what's the fact? The fact that you're increasing the density of development. That's a fact. Well, that's not what this is saying. This is the, you know. Where the intensity is, you know, that's the concentration of development, right? Is there another word that you get? Hey, Siri, what's another word for intensity? <laughs> um, well, more housing. <laughs> well, you know, if more, I, if more housing is added you know, in a smart growth district, right, what I kind? I might, might not be the right word. I think ultimately, I mean, it's just my opinion. I think ultimately density, when people are going to get their hackles up on their neck, it's going to come down to density, you know, how many units per acre. Right. And that, you know, um, I don't know that you want to sugarcoat that too much. Yeah. Or, or I mean, you can sugarcoat it, but don't call it something it's not. I mean, because that's if we get someone no, someone standing up and and beating the drum at a information meeting, it's going to come down to density. So when it'd be nice to have it, some feedback on units per volume. I don't think it's well, sugarcoating, we wanna... but the average person doesn't think about homes per acre. They say. Is it an apartment house? You know, it, it's like mm. it's like these pictures. Is it an apartment house? Is it a pleasant cluster of townhomes? You know, um, mm. yeah, but that's why we're going to try to educate them about that. Yes. <clears throat> if you think it adds to it, I mean, what is the highest level of see? But highest level of the density doesn't say anything about what kind of housing it is. You know, you could have multi housing. And you could have, um, yeah. Do those images a little apartment building and it might yeah. even be the same density, but they're could, different kinds didn't of. Bring mine. You know, are, are you? They are back on the screen. It, it would be nice if if those had some kind of number ranges to them. Um, that would be more helpful to the people taking the. And I don't know if that's easy to. To translate. Uh, would you be amenable to increasing increasing the number of housing units per acre in Hadley? So that kind of defines density and intensity. Mm -hmm. Allowed per acre. Or allowed per intensity. Is that even a word? Intensity is a yeah. word, it means vigor. Which is a great word, by the way. John Kennedy used to use that, but bigger. Um, <laughs> you can go with bigger. How vigorously would you like? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and How vigorous would you like the housing to be on Route Nine? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. It's it could it could be good work. <laughs> um, typically, in in the planning profession, intensity uh, is kind of a blend of uh, density and use. So I've seen scales of up to like one to ten in terms of the intensity, and the most intense is your is your industrial parks with active you know manufacturing, um, rail, you know all these different convergences of, of use. So uh, intensity here, takes density and adds the how overlay it's being, and how it's being used. Yeah. Okay. Right. So typically, the least intense use is your preserved natural open space. It's, right. it's untouched. It's your lowest score of intensity. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, again, I, I think if, if we can give some kind of a glossary of terms, if we can help them to understand that, right. then, then I'm fine right. with intensity. Uh, for the sake of time, I am just going to make note of striking that or adding a quick definition. Which could just be a hotline. You know, I don't know. I don't know if you can do those into the maybe not. I'm going to tell you, people out there don't talk about it that way. If you say, do you want intense housing on Route 9? It's mm -hmm. like saying, do you want an urban area? You know, do you want a scary urban yeah, area? I, yeah, I'm just. Which isn't what it means. 
it's yeah i'm just concerned that intensity sounds like oh i i, I can't embed it negative. it was so intense if we right. want That's i can what I, that's embed a link within the term hmm? i can embed an, a link within the term that so would that be good so then they could click and see what we're talking about how are dense is dense maybe density is the compromise then No, I, 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 heard it I, 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 I like, like the I, fact that the intensity takes density, you know, how many units per acre and what type of use. No, we don't want to put start making this too complicated. We click on this link to see right. what we mean. Yeah. And just, I'm, I can just simply put in a quick little paragraph, you know, sure. how, how much, you know. I'd have to think about it for a minute. Because intensity yeah. kind of has two dials, you know, it's it's got density and then it's got the use profile but this is all for residential i think in this question isn't it yeah. it's it's not the use profile really except that one i guess one says mixed use buildings mm -hmm. well this is the this is the most housing relevant question so if we want to strictly think about it in terms of housing we can change that to you know what? Um, yeah, we can reframe it to focus on the housing element, but that mixed use intensity kind of in, in introduces the the second dial. Right, right, um, right. Maybe that should be a separate question. Yeah, could be a separate question. Perhaps maybe we just do housing density. Instead of confusing, because someone might be against one thing and interpret it that way, and then go low. We're, we're trying to see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's right. Then but they might like the mixed use. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we were to uh, say, if we leave this as uh, an intensity question to get into the the sense of what would be a housing specific question? Would it be what types of housing are are you open to? Yeah, what I mean, current zoning is, is very strict, single family, except for right. you know some uh, duplex conversion, attached condominiums, ADUs is kind of right. understood. It's, it has to be pretty much attached, right? It's either apartments or condos, right? So that's that's what we're talking about. Here. Well, so the question could be, you know, what what missing so there's a, a concept of missing middle housing which means it could include um uh, uh, uh a stacked triplex you know it's a, a very common duplex triplex duplex triplex it could be a cluster it could be a manor house of like six residents in a very large kind of victorian style home um it could be you know a clustered little village of smaller properties around a courtyard um there are plenty of graphics available that we can embed that you know you kind of see the scale and the range and we could just have the option there if we want to keep this question but add more of a housing specific what housing type is missing yeah. i like that within the context of working with group nine this courtyard type stuff doesn't seem like it's a potential does it i think it all depends on the developer developer and access from you know if it's direct access from route nine that might not be the optimal but if it's uh access you know <clears throat> you know 500 feet off of route nine maybe it, it all depends on how you arrange it and it, it doesn't make a lot of sense but like one aspect maybe like tiny homes is that at all possible to fit into there um yeah i mean we could it, that would that would fall into that category um we might not use tiny homes because that that opens up i think a can of worms yeah. you, know, you may go back to something like a starter home scale which is typically kind of like an 800 square foot building um the state defines it as much bigger but um that's a type of housing that is hard to come by hard to find nowadays um at one point it was kind of the, the default residential home was 400 600 800 feet i mean because like a lot of the a lot of the problems that people like that, like 
I saw in like the questions and stuff is like there's no starter homes and that right. seems like right. if we're like just putting in like apartment buildings and like condos that still kind of leaves out the starter home aspect right i think uh there is also a term uh like a cottage home and that's i think gets to that kind of small simple floor plan single bedroom single bath you know it's shit, nice homes kitchen they held the town meeting about three or four years. i know it did <laughs> so i think i think we can make yeah. sure to have that option included at, you know cottage home or slash tiny home that is you know on foundation, you know, I think that that tiny home has been applied with in so many different, you know, manifestation. It, it opens up a pretty yeah, big yeah, yeah. conversation. So I think that's pulling it all together. I think that could be a really great question, and we could use both what types and density of residential um, development. You know, would you cons consider right appropriate for? Yes, because because just by just by showing the options of housing types, you you are getting to that issue of density because you're saying, well, if we have more of these multi-unit dwellings, yeah, um, that but it's linked to nature, types, so they can make sense, you know, right. linked to a type, and understand. Um, I've got a note to um, um, create a, what I'm I'm just creating a missing middle housing type question okay. uh, and I will circulate that question uh, by itself to the to the committee for quick feedback I mean, understanding, I understanding that the, uh, yeah and I is it if it's my understanding was to keep question five is you know what scale of intensity and it's just these three scales of trying to rank uh, what's most preferred. Wait, I thought we were talking about replacing this question with what types of density residential development would you like to see? I was thinking that we would keep this type of question and add a housing add a question. Add a housing a question for housing. Well, I but I will act on behalf of the committee in the direction. So whatever. Yeah, I mean, is, uh, I'm just trying to keep my mind open because I think before I had been thinking that you know intensity probably meant you know a stacked you know at at its least density maybe a duplex or tri tri triplex stacked, or then you go to like a condo apartment uh, cluster home. But one of the things might be like you were saying, starter homes, maybe something where it's smaller lots, smaller, you know, so that would prevent it from being McMansions. You know, if uh, someone were to do a subdivision off of Route 9 that had, that was allowed to have single family lots that were, I don't know, what are we now, 30,000? Yes. So maybe, you know, I don't know. That's three quarters of an acre. Yeah. So maybe if you went down to a third of an acre or something, you went down to 15,000 square feet. And so, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know if that's one of the options. Is, is that cottage housing or is it's not a trailer park? It's a. You know, right. Um, I think you would, you could go even smaller. Mm -hmm. you know, and then, yeah. you know, some, some of the most dense uh, housing zones in this region at 5,000 square foot mm. parcels, which is what, an eighth, an eighth of an acre. Now we have to deal with reality too, though. Most of the businesses on Route 9 are successful and they're not, and they're not going to want to get out of there to put housing there. I mean, so the only, getting back to my point about spotting it, you've got to spot it. You know, you're not going to put a small house development on Route 9 in Hadley. This is valuable commercial property. Right. And your return on your investment isn't going to be there. So from a developer standpoint, you're going to want more density. Yeah, exactly. Right. You don't want separate houses. Right. You don't want... 
You want stacked stuff? You want to ideally t tear down Hampshire Mall and build it again because you want that to be three stories of housing. That's what you'd like. Right. You want economically. The you want huh? apartments. Yeah. yeah. That's the only thing that's going to work. You're not going to have these courtyard type things. Well, actually, the when I went to the UMass that last presentation, they had different teams and the different teams or pairs of students had different parameters. Like some had to keep 100%, some had to keep 50% of, mm -hmm. of, of the ball, or some could 25% you know, or blow it away. And they all had different approaches. Like when it was a free. Well, they, they weren't really concerned. Were they concerned about the economics of the deal? I don't know how much that was. Yeah, that's. Yeah. You know, I remember when in my days in the oil and gas business, Scotty Holland, the head of exploration for Pennzoil, said, I don't want you to worry about what it costs to drill the well. I want you to find something big. And they never did. But, uh, you know, uh, and eventually reality hits it. What are the economics of these things? Right. Uh, just taking note of time. And yes. Wanting to get through this task. You know, we're going to be yeah, someplace yeah. by seven. Yep. Um, two more questions. Very small revisions just to the framing of the question. Number six, as we explore, quote, smart growth, and quote, a long route nine, and we can define what that means uh, or not. What transit enhancements would you prioritize to ensure smooth and safe travel? That is the change of travel. Um, no real change to the options. Uh, per, uh, number seven, um, permitting, quote, smart growth along Route 9 means creating a neighborhood among the businesses and commercial center of town. What would you like to see to encourage social interaction and community gatherings? That's another kind of select all that you that apply. I did add the option of at the bottom pop up market slash bazaars. It's kind of an idea of okay. having uh, the permission, uh, the potential for just uh, could be existing businesses bringing something out to the street side for a pop up little thing. It could be uh, a group of them. What was that guy, Mike? That didn't he have a pop up uh, steak thing he was going to do in the yeah. Romney parking lot? You know, before. Resurrection of Hampshire Mall, there was a flea market yeah. there, a big flea market every weekend. That was in the, the Mountain Farms Mall. Was it Mountain Farms? Yeah. Okay, yeah, before it, was, before yeah. it got resurrected. Yeah. yeah. And but there was a guy just a couple of years ago, was it during COVID that he, he was gonna have yeah, he was, he was JC Penny parking lot. He was gonna sell steaks out of it. Yeah. I think I, I, I think maybe they did for a yeah. while. It was just for a couple weekends. And now uh Harold's is gonna have a pop up in uh, so should in, I have yeah. an option traveling <laughs> <steak? Bill> <laughs> So uh, yeah, it's not as bizarre as it sounds. <laughs> Good luck. Um uh, so we got to have a planning board tomorrow. Same uh, Kyle Really good. We'll talk <laughs> better. We could add the option of something like food trucks or something. Yeah. Oh, if you really want a lightning rod, yeah. We don't have to. It just came to me. We, we got a bylaw that covers that now. It, it, you're right. Yeah. We didn't yeah. pass that because of, I believe, I know where. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we can strike that. Yeah, I don't. Um, okay. Uh, and then I, I think I just moved the open-ended question of what would you like to see most in a vibrant, quote, smart growth district back to the bottom. Just leave that open-ended. just really And that's next they can write. In and, yeah, and it's just a, a short response where they can uh, add a few. Well, I think it's like 100 characters. Or something. Okay. One of the questions of the, the, one of the, excuse me, one of the questions in the back of my mind now, what type of leasehold contracts do the current tenants in Hampshire Mall have? Even though Hampshire Mall has been foreclosed on, those contracts are probably valid. And, you know, you can't just kick them out. You just can't kick, kick PetSmart out or or the uh, the gym, or whatever it's called, or the, or the movie theaters. It's the only movie theater in Hampshire County, really, besides the one in South Hadley. I don't know about that. Tower, Tower yeah, Square movies, Tower, two Tower, screens, Tower, I think. Right. Yeah. From that um, yeah, I think that was the issue that Springfield faced with their East Emerson. Mall. Yeah, Emerson. 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 Yeah. Um, 
So there's there's one new question to create that's housing specific that I'll circulate. But um, well, as of right now, this is still titled draft. The link is live, although I have not shared it with anyone. Okay. Um, the only place I have placed uh, put it is in this, and this is the last thing that I I do need to cover today. Can you just remind us of the time frame? You're going to get the insert in by is it like tomorrow or the next day? Yep. So this is the insert. Um, it's a very, sh uh, what I opted to do, uh, for the sake of budget and just ease, uh, on a single letter size piece of paper. Um, I, there will be a one third letter size insert that I've drafted, uh, with a QR code for the survey with, um, uh, URL so that if they don't, they don't have a smartphone, smartphone, they can at least type it in. Yeah. Um, and then just a quick little introduction. The Hadley Planning Board has convened the Smart Growth Steering Committee to explore ways to increase housing options in town while continuing to protect farmlands and open space. Uh, the committee has created a resident survey to gather the perspectives of Hadley residents on what, quote, smart growth could look like along Route 9. I did qualify that as from the bike path underpass to the Amherst Town Line, borrowing the HPP, the Housing Production Plan language. And then please take a few minutes. Um, survey Monkey says this is a three minute survey. So uh, please take a few minutes to share your feedback and look forward to upcoming opportunities to stay engaged in this project. Yeah. Sounds good. Right. We could go with Shangri-La type stuff and have all these various possibilities and send it to the state and it's never going to happen and they'll send us their money. I believe right. communities have done that. Yeah, that's, you know, well, yeah. give, um, them what, give them what they want. They want something, give it to them. Uh, you, you could do that. Right, you could, Mark? Give it could, to them. You could create a bottom let's, let's Let's ignore reality and give, what, give them whatever the hell they want. Uh, you could get, you could do that. You could go that route. Um, you could create the zoning that would allow for uh, well, over a thousand additional units that would get the community six hundred thousand dollars. Nothing could ever be built. You'd be stuck. You'd have that money. You'd have that zoning. Just off the back of the envelope. Yeah, I'd say you'd do that, and the economics aren't going to be there to do it because it's Route Nine, which is valuable commercial property. Yeah, so developers will always opt to exactly. underline zoning. Exactly. Um, okay. the, currently, the survey monkey link is just the default. I didn't customize it or make it. You can change those digits at the end to say Hadley Smart Growth okay. if we wanted to, or we can just keep it the default. It's, it's, it doesn't matter. If I have no opinion of it. It's just if the committee wants to make What's the link it. now? It's surveymonkey.com slash r slash 7 dt 9 wnq A bunch of uh, is, yeah. there any, is there any way to make it? I could customize it. Easier... To, I could customize it to say surveymonkey.com slash r slash Hadley Smart Growth. And so it's I think that's good. I think that's a good idea. Uh, we could also we could also say um, look forward to upcoming opportunities to stay engaged by visiting the planning board web page i can do that too and so then yeah. we at least have some blurb on the zoning or on the planning board web page yeah at least a landing spot for information for now yeah all right i will make those quick edits this will get printed tomorrow um we're going to order 500 sheets that will then get cut. So that'll create 1500 inserts. That was, um, that's about a hundred more than what Kim and the collector's office quoted me as okay. required okay. Uh, to reduce duplicates. Okay. So um, property owners that get multiple water bills will get one insert. Just one announcement. They won't get 10 or whatever mm -hmm. they have. So, um, so I'll, I'll make those minor edits. I'll change the link. Um, and it'll be live it exists out in the world wide web but nobody can get to it just yet um and when 
before August 1st, we should probably, or before water bills get delivered, I believe they're being mailed out on August 1st. So we'll, we'll try to finalize this before then. Great. All right. Um, Our next meeting isn't until after that, right? If we stick with the current uh, schedule, it would be the first Monday, correct? The first Monday of August, mm -hmm. which would be, I don't know. First Monday would be the 5th. The 5th, yes. Out of three weeks from today, it would be the 5th. And the next day would be the planning board, yep. Yeah. And that's the next meeting of this group? Yes, the 5th. And that's in three weeks. So if you think you need us to do a one more quick meeting on the survey, Maybe we can do a Zoom or something. We just have to post it. Right. But if you think you're good. If, if the committee is fine with just a yeah. quick review of the question, I'm fine to move forward and okay. integrate it and it'll be live. Okay. Uh, I'll customize the URL to Hadley Smart Growth. That's good. For the survey. And then can that link be used? Like if we want to. If we want to share it on a listserv of Hadley folks, you can we just can copy that link and put it on. You can yeah. copy that link. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You'll let us know how to do that. Oh, you share, can I'll share it as a, I'll share it as an active hyperlink. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll share it to the committee as a a clickable link. Yes. And if you have a smartphone, once you use your camera and and it, and you tap it and it brings you to that site, you should have an option at the bottom to. Share that, you know, the box with the arrow. Like, uh, you know, you should, if that, if, if you want to if, share the QR code, yeah, you no, if you want to share the, well, yeah, the QR code, which is the link, and then you would just hit, you know, you just hit that, and then you could put it right. in. Right. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, I think you can either type it or you can just take it. Out of the smartphone using the look, uh, the uh, share option. Um, anything else on your agenda? Um, no, we didn't get to the topic of focus groups, but um, that'll be the primary focus of our first next okay. year, August 5th. I would just add that. Um, Shout out to Kayla. She has typed up the minutes from our last meeting. I was on the road, so I have not had a chance to look at them, but if I will try to look at them and then uh, we can share them with anyone. Has she doing that for the planning board too? She's awesome. working on those too. So, yeah, so then I guess at the next meeting we can make sure that we're, we can review all that, make yeah. sure we're all on the same page. Yeah. Progress so far. I'll have an update on um, what's come about from collaborating with the planning board and requesting additional funding uh, through this grant opportunity that closes next week. Um, I think we have a strong argument to receive that funding. So we have to match part of it. Don't twenty five percent. It's required for the grant. Uh, that could be strictly the current budget for this project it as it is, is. Okay. or the planning board could offer a little bit more <clears throat> that we can't offer because we don't have it. We don't have it, but we can take the DLTA and put that yeah. down. You could just table. leave it as the DLTA okay. and that's surprise. Okay, okay. It, good. To double the DLTA. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. District local technical assistance for those not familiar. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. Motion to adjourn. Um, no. Uh, so move that. Do we have a second? Second. Any <laughs> re any reason not to adjourn? Yeah. All in favor? Andrew I, Michael I, Mark I, Deborah I.